It is 2953 of the Third Age. Erebor has been reclaimed. Saron has fled from Mirkwood into Mordor to begin his pursuit for the One Dream. And the last meeting of the White Council has tasked Gildor and Glorian with assembling a fellowship to stop Umbarian pirates from assembling ancient artifacts from a Second Age prophecy. Join the players of this Adventures of Middle-Earth Dungeons and Dragons campaign as they unravel the mysteries of the prophecy. Welcome to Arda in part one of the Inglorian Bastards trilogy, Search for Tor Arasia. Um, so, so at the, at the end of the fight, um, you, you guys, uh, you, Riken's really hurting. Um, and uh, unless you guys do something, uh, Riken's going to go unconscious. Can I do like uh, maybe like a medicine check to see if there are any herbs that would help him? Wait, why am I going to go unconscious? I don't take damage over time. The, the oh, twenty, you you're the turning tw into a race. I have yeah. twenty less health, right? But I'm not getting worse. No, you're going to take twenty <laughs> damage. Can I do a nature check to see if there's anything that'll help him around? What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You both, you, and everyone can, and I think Faraday would be good at this too. Mm -hmm. Burn runs over and grabs some dirt and rubs it on the wound. <laughs> usually works. Just, just spit on it. Yeah. <laughs> Grim, 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 Grim actually standing on Ethelus. <laughs> All right. Nature fails. <laughs> the medicine's pretty good. So yeah, Grimmel just brings over. He's like, "Hey, will this help?" And Grimmel's like, "I use this when my nipples are sore." Well, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it. Works great. I carry this with me to use as toilet paper. <laughs> It's a great salve for my chafed nipples. That is my nipple. <laughs> oh. Works for hemorrhoids. <laughs> great. All right, so you guys apply this to Raiken, and Raiken takes 10, 10 hit points of damage. Um, and Raiken, the way that it's going to work is um, every day you take another permanent uh, 20 hit points worth of damage. Jesus. Per permanent. Okay. Uh, and five shadow points. So every day. Yep. So you'll take uh, you'll take five shadow points today as well. So just put it in the blue box. Uh, so I would I would be aware that we have to find like that he's beyond my healing, right? Like we would have to find somebody else, obviously. Yeah, you guys would realize very quickly that that he's going downhill and that he'll be dead. And this is daily. And remember, um, you you figure you're about a half a day's ride from Isengard. Um, let me see here. We're not going back to Isengard. That guy fucking stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here you leave there with a white handprint where you don't want it. They say, <laughs> like old man. So we'll hear him say um, that, you know, you guys are, are pretty close. You're in the Gap of Rohan now. You're near the Heath Fells. Uh, there's a there's an outpost there called Fro uh, Frothbond. Uh, sorry, Frothbond. Um, and you're, you're welcome to come there with them. Um, and maybe they, you know, could try something there. What, are they going to rub horse piss on me? <laughs> <laughs> So Angle would, would, would really sorry, I just took five shadow points, so I'm feeling a little salty. Angle would, would have, this would require like very masterful healing, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would through his shadow lore. So he would probably be like, "There's not going to be anything to help you there." Um, and you guys are, gosh, you're probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're like nine days away from Bree. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, we can get to not Bree. Does that mean Angle we have to go and back and see the green? green? clasps him on the shoulder and is like, well, say hello to the dog for me. Do the ritual oh, right now. Ritual time. Ritual time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. I said so yeah, before, and now wants. it might actually be time. It's what the DM wants. <laughs> Let's just backtrack. Yeah. No, we're not doing it with Saruman. Fuck that guy. We're going to do it right here in the woods. I'm telling you, that guy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <it> stinks. Smell. <laughs> well, yeah, he just smells like chode. <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess if that's what the group thinks because like uh anglin would know how like dire it is he'd be like yeah he is like we're gonna have to do something he's like he's beyond any of our skill i'm like i'm like uh uh since i took so many shadow points too i'm sort of just like w like wandering around like babbling to myself i'm like bleeding to death i look like i'm a fucking zombie and i'm just kind of like oh uh, whenever did i bring up sauron i'm i'm, I'm <laughs> sauron pardon me i'm just like yeah uh, smells so bad <laughs> and then i puke a little bit <laughs> All right, um, so you guys, are you doing the ritual, or? I guess we, I guess we have no choice. Yeah, yeah do this. probably. So we want to do a rest. I don't know how it works. works. Like, do I do it for him, or does he do it himself? I know it requires a man, but that's probably something we have to guess and deal with the repercussions on. 
<laughs> okay. well, well, Josh, uh, if you don't get to play anymore in this campaign, we're sorry. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I was watching Game of Thrones, yes. Yeah, Wait, so who's doing? I'm confused now. I uh, uh, um, should we try and make it to the town first and then do it? Mm -hmm. How far away is it? I mean, yeah, is it a safe thing to do in the town? <laughs> Are we putting anybody at risk by doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know anything about this. Who would be doing it, Riken? I think I, I think I I think I should do it because I'm thinking that I'm thinking that uh, I don't know if we have to kill me yet. Is it sacrifice or is it like a dude? So what Saruman told you explicitly, I think, was that um, when you when whoever performs the ritual or when you perform the ritual, um, it, it's very dangerous, um, you know. But but also like like you know the the opportunity to sort of touch on the power of of the West is just like he couldn't resist it. You could tell. Yeah, so I'm maybe, it. maybe it would save Riken's life. I mean, Anglin would be like, "Well, you know, it's not going to hurt him any worse than he already is." So. <laughs> uh, that's true. Unless he like turns into a wraith, and then we well, have like an immortal wraith. That. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am exactly one day from doing that. <laughs> His eyes are kind of like glazing over now. They like get this silvery look. Too. Yeah. Well, well, how long is a short yes. rest? It's an hour. I'm take an hour and get get some. Can we yeah, ice back? on a short rest. Can I? Can I? Can I tell? Can I still tell a, a fireside tale? <laughs> 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 hey, my like, blood really fucked up. But blood everywhere. My family's dead. And my dog. <laughs> <laughs> really sad tale. <laughs> Yeah, we should probably roll some hit dice just to be safe. But you also don't know how many other Embarians or Urukai are out there too. I mean, no. So you said oh. it'll take a whole day to get to Rohirrim, though, right? Are we doing a rest or not? Frothbrand is the is the encampment, but it's a uh, whole day, right? No, no, no. It's a it's a half. It's not as far as Isengard. About half a day. We could go there and then rest and then do it. I would say that would be our best bet. Go there, take a short rest, and then do the ritual. Sounds fine to me. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm I'm just your bitch, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right, guys. So you you come to uh, this Rohirrim uh, outpost, which is not too far away. Probably another three to four hours. Are these uh, tents? Yeah, these are all tents. We're, you guys are way big on this. What map. is this? An outpost for ants? <laughs> 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 so we're gonna, let's just put you like we'll just put you around here. Uh, or, or where do you want to go? Do you want to go to the main? You want to go to Captain Catfrith's tent? Do we have time? He's probably changing pretty fast by the time we rest, is not he? Yeah, I mean, but he would offer you his facilities um, if you if you want to sort of be in there. Yeah, Captain Catfrith, yeah, do you mind if we do some really creepy shit in your tent real quick? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't really. I mean, he's a pretty simple soldier. He doesn't really understand sort of what's going on or what, what you're about to do. <laughs> Are we healing probably first? A good thing. Um, you could do you could do a short rest rest if you want to, um, but Josh, um, yeah. So uh, let's see. So Josh, you can. What did I say? Uh, you're 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 down twenty, right? So you can you can be within twenty. What? Your, Excuse me. Your, you can be within twenty of your max. Yeah, yeah. My max is twenty five. I I can't even roll enough hit dice hit dice to do to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What was your okay, four? Yeah, you get an extra hit die because of my. Yeah. Oh no, that's a long rest. Never mind. Never mind. I I, I get campfire towels on short rest for yeah. I think, that's, right. I think it's long rest. But... Oh, let me look. Because mine's said. long rest. Uh, I can't even find. Do you add your constitution to the hit die? No. Short rest. Yay! One d one d six. Oh, we all get an extra one d six. Yeah, everybody gets an everybody gets an extra one d six because I sold. I just told you a tale. <laughs> Sure. Yes, I, I covered a total of five health. Depressing the, balls. Yeah, the, the tail is uh, is really depressing and doesn't make much sense. But you guys get extra. You you have a good <laughs> chuckle. <laughs> nice. I still can't survive a whole day. All right, guys. Um, so tell me, uh, tell me about this ritual. What do you do here? Are we going to use his tent like Dirty Mike and the Boys, or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so you're like uh, you, you guys are all just pretend the tenth figure right and you're like you're like standing around him and yeah uh, and we're gonna we're gonna we're about to corpse explode me so <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. maybe place down pterodon shield first so you place pterodon shield down yeah what else do we got here what else the info do we have about how we, this works we just need to put i'm guessing put the items on the sides that 
is corresponding to the wager. Yeah, that's probably yeah. good. Upon studying the words yeah. of the Master Kalibrimor, I have constructed it, that which served the centerpiece of the ritual. This is about his shield, okay. Could I use lore or shadow lore to see if there's anything that I could discern from the... Yeah, yeah, I'd let you do shadow... Uh, yeah, I'd let you do shadow lore. <laughs> that's my shadow lore. It's a special ability. I just forgot to rename it. Yeah, that's fine. That's um, what does the ring do? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, turn on super Sorry. I just forgot to rename mine. Um, I guess Marco. I guess Marco would would think that Burns' suggestion was a good one. Mm. Okay. What was Burns' suggestion? Put the th put the thing down and put the things around it. So where so they go? Okay. So you put them to the top. The who has the ring? Can I wear the ring? I have just the ring. Yeah. For the hell of it. Or. I don't yeah, think it does mean. anything useful, but... The sword is to the top, the orb is to the right, the uh, stone is to yeah, the left, the ring. and then Riken is underneath. So Riken puts on the ring? Yeah. Sure. Alright. Um, Wait, and then... does he need to put on the ring? I don't know, I mean, I got part of it. Yet. It's definitely gonna be like a Thundercats ring, I'm gonna like... Thunder. <laughs> Thunder. <laughs> Thundercats ho. Like, hey, uh, I want that back! <laughs> I was like, sorry, no, that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not thunder. It's just my belly. Uh, so you're putting on the ring, right? Yeah. All right. And then what? So you have the items laid out. Yeah. Um, anybody else got any ideas? <laughs> Pla place your hand on the shield because the line on the ring and the line on the shield are the same. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Should, a, I, should I like give it a fist bump? The line? Yeah. That's what oh, I'm give saying. it a fist bump. Okay. All right. So that's what I do. All right. Um, so I prepared something in writing for this. So just bear bear with me here. <laughs> I love that. As Pterodon's signet ring touches the great lion on the shield, the skies darken in a gray-green eclipse light. From the horizon there, came, there comes two musical progressions, one deep and wide and beautiful, and the other is loud and vain. The two musics become one, stealing the pattern and the harmony from one another. Following the part of the musical notes, a hole opens in the horizon that seems to be infinitely long, yet clearly visible at any angle. F uh, Riken feels a burning in his ring finger at first that begins to echo into his hand. The Elendil stone explodes into flame and rises into the air. The Durin stone flashes with the flame imperishable and appears to fuel the Palantiri. As the vibration begins to reverberate down the arm of Riken, a grand island comes into view. Beyond the waves, there is a walled entrance to a harbor like none other on Arda. The very walls moved and glowed as if each brick was made from the living stone of Ea. Beyond the harbor, the city grew uh, to a grand tower. Within the walls of the tower, there burned the master Palantiri of Avalone. The tower pulled at Riken, um, and the vibration coursed through his body. The shards and the Morgul blade were pulled out of his skin in a sensation of utter pain and ultimate release. Then there was a silence and a calm that was deafening, and the black sword of Aeol also rose into the air and pointed into the tunnel still on the horizon. A voice boomed from the sword that was dark and powerful, and the notes of each word matched the falsetto rhythm of the loud and vain notes. The voice beckoned into the, dark, into the blackness beyond the tunnel, and a great shadow came into the land. Finally, a pulse knocks the figures and items into a large circle beginning on the shadow, as if it is born from the void. The vision of Tol Arisea is gone, and the secret fire is extinguished. The world looks as, as it once did. The great lantern was released from the void, and there before you is a hideous black figure that appears to move even when it is still. It focuses on each of you, looking to the core of you. Riken sits up and is healed from the poison of the Morgul blade. And in, in the middle of you... You see, we're all gonna die. <laughs> you see this. You see this like pulsing shadow that that's like takes no form, but almost looks humanoid. And it's like right now, it's kind of surrounding Riken, and you can feel it looking inside of all of you. So Eglin would be like pissing his pants. Mm. I think all of you have never experienced anything like what just happened. Um, and um, any questions mm -hmm. about what you saw, or um, um, I, I'm gonna describe what what happens now. So you guys are all like thrown back. Um, like some of you, like out of the tent, even, um, and uh, yeah, where you saw Captain, what's his name, pissing himself. <laughs> yeah. 
Grimald stumbles a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> One of his nipple rings get gets blown off. Yeah. Would, be, would would he have like would any of that been familiar to him? Any of those visions or anything? Or? Um, you you recognize Tolarisea from from the writings and the descriptions and the in the songs. Okay, gotcha. So again, Tolarisea is an island off of where the gods live, um, and the the Elos Tyrian stone, the Elendil stone that you have, supposedly talks to the master stone there. And Teradon's wager was that if you brought all of these items together, you would essentially, like like I like I mentioned, you communicate use the, with it basically, or or have like a foot in the door of uh, to basically get there um, without having to be an elf. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and and it looked like everything was going all good and well until uh, the sword pointed into the tunnel, into the horizon, and then you heard you heard music coming from from the heavens, and it was like it was like two songs were sort of happening at the same time and like competing almost, and then uh, the sort of discordant mus- music kind of won out, and this voice spoke in tune with that music, and uh, and it brought forth, it called forth this shadow. It's not Melkor, but he may have had something to do with it. Is he one of the voices? So the music that was described is almost um, verbatim what was described in the Silmarillion Mm -hmm. uh, for the the creation of the world, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, does this thing speak at all, or no? But so it's looking. It's looking inside of all of you right now, and we're going to do something fun. Gross. Do you remember that scene in <laughs> Ghostbusters where everyone Ray's like, right, "Everybody, empty your minds, empty your minds." Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Yeah. And then he thinks of the Pillsbury. I couldn't help but stay puff marshmallow, man. Uh, I need everybody to roll a d twenty. Oh boy. There it is. Oh, good lord, burn. All right, so I so this is dead, right? Like it just died. No, no. So, so this thing is like, like you can feel it. Each of you feel it, like, like, like it's peering inside of you. It's like burning you, and, um, and, uh, and like, right, and you're standing in the middle of it, and, uh, and it just stops. It, like you can, everyone can tell it's focusing its attention on burn, and then it, and then it flies off to the to the northwest, like gone, like totally gone, like fast, like like ultra speed, yeah, like supersonic. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Anglin would be like, I felt as though that entity was probing my very being. Did it communicate with any of you, or did you feel anything similar? Yeah, we all say yes. Yeah, do we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tessero yeah. just takes out a, a, his pipe weed, and, and his hands are shaking, and he just, he just lights the pipe. He's... Uh, he would a- Anglin would ask what... Uh, Ask if the group knew what it could be uh, moving towards in that direction. Where did it fly again? North. So Faradir, it um, headed in the direction of the Shire and uh, the Tower Hills and oh. Gray, Gray Haven. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. we gotta go there. So we're gonna follow it. Is that the? I mean, you you still have the items. We just unleashed this on the world. We have to fix our mistake. We don't even know what we unleashed, though, right? It looked pretty it, shitty. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it didn't do anything necessarily evil, did it, Jared? No, no, it didn't. But nothing about it felt right. Um, that, that you can still hear the music. It, like, haunts you. Though this marks the end of the episode, the road goes ever on. Until next time, join us at longwinded.1 and consider giving us a review on Apple Music, Spotify, or really whichever platform you choose.